I don't know that I'm in any better position following I fart than the earlier one. I'm just saying. <laughs> so there are a couple of disclaimers I have on here. Because while I will not talk about my clients or the firms that I've worked for, I do not feel the same responsibility to men that I have dated. <laughs> so if you and I have ever gone out and you decided to come tonight knowing this was my topic, that's your fault. So I've been interviewing and hiring people since I was 19 years old, starting from people who sweep the floor and do data entry to truck drivers and CEOs. I've got hiring down to a science. People actually hire me now to help them hire. Dating, well, that started in the second grade. Okay, well, not really the second grade. We held hands in line while we waited to go to recess, but I'm gonna count it. Okay. My real first date was when I was 13. Now, I recently, a couple months ago, turned 41. So, if you do that, thank you. If you do that math, that's over 24 years of dating, over 1,200 weeks, over 2,000 dates, and that's around 10,077 hours of dating which according to this guy, makes me an expert, <laughs> right? So we've established I'm an expert in HR, I'm an expert at dating, and one of the biggest mistakes I see people make in both arenas is they hire mini-me's, right? If you look like me and talk like me and act like me, you must be brilliant. And so we date those people and we hire those people and we already have that brain, right? We don't need another one. The other big mistake that people make is they go to the 180 degree guy. Now, I am a huge fan of the transition guy when it comes to dating. Going from the doofus that you dated to 180 degrees opposite of him. However, it's not so good when you're hiring because you start missing things. So, for example, a couple of weeks ago, I'm out on a date with this guy and I mentioned having been to China. And he says, oh, I love China. I've always wanted to go to China. Where in China did you go? Did you go to Tokyo? <laughs> in, in case you didn't get that, um, here's the map. So you have to be very cognizant of what it is you're looking for and very specific about what your ideals are and what are some deal breakers. And if I had realized I was going to follow Joel, I would have put use as the I fart app on a regular basis, <laughs> you've got to figure out which list it would have been on. Okay, <laughs> The competencies in the HR arena, when we're looking to hire somebody, it's important to look at competencies. What are the most important things that we need to have somebody come on board with us? Now where in the world do you find these people? Right? You've decided what you want, you've decided what you're looking for. I really don't know because you'll notice there's no ring on this hand. Okay, no, but in the dating scenario, we try all kinds of unique ways of finding that person, right? We sit down for six to eight minutes and we decide if this is a person we can spend the rest of our lives with. Unfortunately, studies show that when you make a decision like that in a stressful environment that's timed, you make bad decisions. And yet, in the HR arena, we do it through job fairs. You show up, you talk for six to eight minutes, and you hope that it gives you enough information to get a call back so that somebody checks, yes, I'm interested. We take it beyond that into the online dating format. Oh, except in hiring, we call it monster.com and jobbing.com, where you post your resume and hope that somebody will call you. Kind of like on Match, where you post and hope that somebody will call you. In both of these arenas, there's important things that you should not talk about. When you're hiring somebody, you shouldn't talk about sex, politics, religion, protected classifications. Regardless of what you're hiring somebody for, or if you're dating them, you should not talk about this. I do not want, on a first date, a 20-minute tirade about your, how did you say it, pimped up, geared up warrior? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After you've met and you've connected, then it's a matter of doing the follow-up. When we're talking about recruiting, you send an email, you send a note, and you say thank you so much for the interview, I so appreciate it. When you're dating, you send a text message. In either case, sending one is a great follow-up. Sending seven is stalking. <laughs> the biggest difference between hiring and dating is the Zaza Zoo. In hiring, you don't so much need it. In dating, you absolutely must. 
That's my 10,000 hours of hiring and dating wrapped up in five minutes. I'm Nora Burns, and this is Ignite for Talents.